Autumn in Karindi Forest. The rainy season has come to an end and everything is still a lush green in this usually dry, deciduous forest. The lemurs have enough to eat. Lemurs only live in the forests of Madagascar. These men are hot on their tracks. They want to get hold of a sifaka, the largest lemur in this forest. Bullseye. Now they have to wait for the stunned animal to fall from the tree. They don't want it to injure itself in the process. A perfect catch. Now it all goes very fast. The lemur is measured and weighed, and a transmitter is attached to its body. It's not just any animal. Peter Kappeler is very well acquainted with him. His name is Moritz. He's male. We know exactly what he's done since birth. He left his natal group once, and we know exactly when that happened, how old he was. That's a benefit of marking these animals individually. We can get very detailed information about them. Peter Kappeler is a professor at the German Primate Center of Göttingen University. He has been conducting research into lemurs in Karindi for more than 20 years and runs the Primate Center's field station in the forest. Eight species of lemur live here including the extremely rare, narrow-striped mongoose. How do lemurs interact with other lemur species? How do they live in their environment? The observers here don't seem to bother them. The students here are collecting data for their PhD research. Alessio Anania is interested in the noises made by the lemurs. Katya Rudolph is interested in their social behaviour and health. Collecting data requires patience and endurance. I watch three or four hours in the morning and four hours in the afternoon. Four different animals. When they sleep, I just watch them sleeping for an hour and try not to fall asleep myself. There are still many questions left unanswered about the behavior of the lemurs. But how much time is left to find out more? Both the forest and its inhabitants are endangered. It's easily forgotten in this beautiful forest where everything is still intact and natural. But if you go 10 kilometers away in any direction, there's no more forest at all. That's when you realize how endangered all of this is. This is 10 kilometers away. At a fork in the road, the residents of a nearby village sell their produce, mostly corn, some melons. The forest provides them sustenance, even as they slowly contribute to its destruction. Peter Kappeler can't fathom the speed at which it's all happening. Two years ago, this was all a completely intact forest. Groups of sifakas bounced from one tree to the next during the day. There was plenty of shade and life. Now all that's left are charred remains. It's mainly corn and peanut plants that have replaced everything. The forest was burnt down to plant corn and peanuts, but the soil is already depleted after just a few harvests. It's depressing, as depressing as you can imagine it would be. What's frustrating too is that it's not evil corporations here setting up oil plantations. It's the poor rural population who have to try to make a living somehow. Madagascar is one of the poorest countries in the world. To survive, some people here must destroy their environment especially in times of political instability. A nearby village. There are many children here, like everywhere in Madagascar. Its population is growing. People know that the forest is disappearing. It will be here for another 20 or 30 years, perhaps. What then? 
We depend on wood, our houses, the furniture, it's all made of wood. If you want to sell something, it's wood. We also cook with wood charcoal. When there's nothing left, people will move on. That's what will happen. But where to? At the field station in the still intact forest, the researchers are hoping to find a solution. This is where they live and make their initial analyses. They've already figured out a few things about the noises lemurs make. When an individual gets lost, he starts to call all the others with this vocalization and uh, the, the group mates usually answer with this one. The local forestry authority is currently building here. The new boss wants to boost ecotourism. If this brings jobs for the locals, then the pressure on the forest will subside. We're trying to work more closely with the villagers and integrate them more in the conservation process. The researchers also want to help improve living conditions in the local villages. Their association is called Friends of Kirindi, and today they're celebrating with the British and German ambassadors. We want to support you, not only with this scientific project that has existed for 30 years, but with other measures. This is one of the reasons why I came here today, to listen to you and see what we can do together. This region in western Madagascar needs more attention. The researchers have helped set up a nursery where the first seedlings are being planted. The rapidly growing trees will alleviate pressure on the forest. Peter Capilla has promised to donate 30 cents for each tree that is still here in a year. This is just a drop in the bucket. There are so many children here, and the only hope is that we can raise awareness among them and make sure that they look after the trees, that they develop a sense of responsibility for nature. Otherwise, it won't work. The researchers will continue their efforts. For more, it's too. He's woken up, set free, and able to return to his group. Preserving the Karindi forest is essential. Otherwise, the lemurs have no chance of survival.